throughout the 40s, 50s, and even the 60s, the school saw a lot of changes. Over that time, we adopted the nickname, the Aggies. Of course, we became Delaware Valley College. So while all this change was occurring, the existing teams still saw continued success. Football dominated on the gridiron throughout the 60s, thanks in large part to Bill and Ted Cottrell. They combined for five most valuable athlete awards in field events. I'd like to mention uh, a few people that had impacts on me. Uh, I mentioned Coach Craver, who recruited me. He became like my dad on campus and in wrestling until he passed. I, and the other one was Ned Lenta, who was the uh, athletic director, uh, head trainer and for years. Those guys really impacted uh, my athletic career there. We had we had some great ball players there. Like I said, we we think our class went around Warren Hicks, uh, uh, Harry Capazzoli, John Nice, Pat, Dad, Greg Scott, Denny Lamb, Jimmy Branch, Skip Duffy, Dan Satarski. Stan was a heck of a DB from uh, Central High School in Philadelphia. Bill Cottrell graduated in 1966 went on to play for the Buffalo Bills, and Ted Cottrell graduated four years later and had a stint with the Atlanta Falcons and saw a lot of success coaching at the highest level of the game. Well, my brother Bill was a student there, and of course he played football. And so our family was pretty familiar with uh, Del Val and had gone to a, a few of his games. And so my senior year, getting ready to uh, decide on what I'm going to do and what college I'm going to attend. The, the coach at that time was Bill Craver. So he had, my brother Bill at that time, uh, he goes he goes on plays for the Detroit Lions, but at that time at Del Val, Bill was uh, about six foot three, 260, 260, uh, 265 pounds. My senior year, I'm like six foot, 195 pounds. And I'm playing offensive line and linebacker. Well, uh, Coach Craver, he he looked at and uh, he looked at me and said, "Well, this guy's got to get a little bit bigger because everybody in the family, is big. everybody in the family is big." So he kept recruiting me, and I had a I had a halfway decent career at my high school, Chester High School, but our team was terrible, uh, so I was not getting a lot of publicity, and so he kept recruiting me, and then. I was a pretty good student. I had good grades and all. And so Coach Craver, I can remember this. Kev. He came to my home in uh, my senior year. I think it was in December. And he got, and he, and of course he knew my father and my mother. So he had dinner with the family. And then at the uh, end of the dinner, my father and, and Coach Craver get to talking. And, um, Coach Craver, uh, my father asked him, Coach Craver, he says, uh, Coach, he says, I know a little bit about Del Val since uh, my son Bill is up there and we've gone to some games. He says, but I got one question for you. He says, how much is it gonna, gonna cost John, which is my middle name, and my father didn't call me Ted. He said, how much is it gonna cost John to go to Del Val? And so, we always say this story, Kev. My father only went to the third grade, he went to the third grade down in Virginia. And of course he worked on the farm and back then. Yeah, his father said, boy, uh, boy, you need to come on. That school is not gonna help you, you need to work on this farm. So my father went to the third grade, but we always said this. My father had a third grade education, but he had a doctorate in economics. And so when, 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 when Coach Craver, he said, well, Ted's a pretty good student, and, and I I'm, I'm think he's going to get this scholarship, this academic scholarship from his high school. I've talked to the guys people, and he's, he's in line for that. And I'm going to give him some aid from this athletic scholarship. We got some athletic money, uh, give him a football scholarship. And I had this other grant for him, and he put a zero, a dollar sign on the, on the, uh, on the paper, and gave it to my father. My father said, boy, that's where you want to school. <laughs> so that, that was my recruiting. <laughs> that, that was my recruiting spiel. And I went, what? He goes, boy, that's where you're going to school. I go, oh, okay, okay. We look at quite a few 
uh, people from the town of Willowstown supporting the, the, uh, the school and our students. We had a good football team. We started, there's a, we, there was a push in 1960, uh, 65 to uh, doctor work. And in my senior year, I was, uh, I was in charge of the entertainment committee. So I was the chair of that and uh, has a few guys helping me. And we tried to improve you know, the social life with the dances and the concerts on campus. And I was in charge of uh, booking the groups and bands and stuff for the, the dances and the concerts. I can remember uh, one time we had the Isley Brothers. Uh, that was that was a great rock and roll group, and they uh, they came on campus. So that was, that was a big moment for us. Dr. Robert Orr was he was really a genius. And a lot of those people with that type of intelligence at that level, they they had a hard time uh, coming down and breaking it down to the average student, you know, because <laughs> they're so far out there. But he was uh, one of these guys who was a genius who could also teach. He would schedule lectures in one, in one of the halls and just on his own. And, and just come and if you were having a hard time uh, understanding him, now I'm going to talk to a little bit about that, why it was kind of difficult to keep up with him in class. He would say, just come and he would have these sessions for like an hour, hour and a half, two hours, as long as you want to stay there. And as a matter of fact, they had a, uh, they would start at this faculty board as a, that's the, what the students were elected top professor on campus. Well, he started, Dr. Orr started winning just about every year. <laughs> the students were voting for Dr. Orr. So they, they changed it and made it, well, he can't, you can't win two years in a row. Because <laughs> we came like Dr. Robert Orr Award, everybody would just vote for Dr. Orr. He, at the American like Sense, started this class. He just, was it, we were in organic chemistry, a lot of chains and stuff. Well, anyway, he flips through the pages, then closes the book, and then starts going. We called him lightning chalk. Chalk was just flying, you know, dust, dust was just flying. He, doctor was just going, he just was going, this is going. By halfway through the lecture, he stopped and backed up and goes, whoa, something doesn't look right. Well, he said, give me a second. So he goes, he fumbles through his pages, he goes, mm -hmm. I knew it. You know, he went up and relate and erase one little line. Miss Jenkins, now it's correct. We looked at each other. Do you believe this guy? Do you believe this guy? And then he proceeded. He go on light the chalk, chalk the fly. But uh, a great, a great professor, uh, a great representative of the school. And I asked him, I said, Dr. Ward, you know, you, you're a brilliant man. And obviously you could make a lot of money, a lot of money in the industry, in the industry. He says, Ted, I know. He said, I've had several job offers, but he says, I'm happy here at Delaware Valley College. He said, this is where I'm happy. And that boy, that, that was, uh, that always rang out in my mind. You know, a man like that, that brilliant, who could make thousands and thousands of dollars in private industry ate at Del Val because he loved it. That goes to show you, you have to love what you're doing. And uh, so he was one of the ones that really sticks out in my mind. And Dr. French uh, in biology, uh, Professor Barnes in food industry, those guys really had an impact on me. But I thought they were, they were really good and they worked with the students, which uh, which is kind of think thing of Delaware Valley. Uh, the professors want you to succeed.